Hey internet, I'm Simon Squibb, your host at the Good Luck Club. I believe luck is an ingredient that's necessary for a successful life. Whatever you're starting, building or shipping, I'm here to tell you, without luck, you're not going to make it. I've been testing my luck as an entrepreneur since I was 15 years old. I have had plenty of failures and successes, and I'm fascinated by the things I couldn't control. The moments that made my career, and the ones that threatened to end it. In each episode, I'll invite a guest to share their stories about luck, the good and bad, and together we'll test my theory about luck's role. Hi folks, welcome to the Good Luck Club podcast. I'm your host, Simon Squibb. Today, I'm lucky to have Rugger Bruning, CEO and founder of Story Terrace. Story Terrace is your personal biography. Recently, Ruggo was a participant in The Dragon's Den, Season 17, Episode 10. If you haven't watched it, you should. It's a great episode. Ruggo gets grilled about his valuation, grilled about his business, and comes out the other side victorious. We'll talk about what victorious means today in the podcast. And I would like to welcome Rugger to the podcast today. Thank you so much for coming. I say, I say, I say, coming. Where are you right now? I am in my home in uh, in London. I am on one side overlooking uh, a few nice trees. I'm actually in the baby room right now, which is the quietest place in the house. <laughs> Wow, the baby room is the quietest place in the house. That 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 that's not always true. No, only because <laughs> the baby is outside. Oh, fair enough. Well, look, thank you for your time today. I, I'm so used to uh, sitting with folks that uh, even in my intro, I'm saying thanks for being here today. But uh, I do appreciate you giving up time. I know we're all locked inside, but we're all still busy, especially an entrepreneur like yourself building a business. But I always like to start off the podcast um, asking this one simple question about what is success to you? For me, the ultimate success is to change the way people think about um, how they record their life story and that of the people that they care about. So I want to make sure that in the future, basically everyone records their life story, whether it's through story terrors or by doing it themselves, so that um, when we, in 50 years, everyone can learn about their great grandparents and their grandparents. Wow, that's, that's, that's a good business, uh, I guess, frame for success. Do you have a personal goal as, as an entrepreneur, what, what, you, what you see as success? I, I think that's, that's my, my really big goal. So I'm very focused on, on a long-term goal and then trying to iterate as much as needed to, to get there in the short term. I think because I have a background in consulting, I tend to focus every day on the biggest problem that I have and try to resolve that and then move on to the next one. So in the, in the very short term, my success is to solve the biggest problem I have or the biggest blocker for, for growth for the business. Do you um, ever put parameters of financial success in, into your thinking? Yes, I mean, obviously we, we have plans and try to double our sales every year. That's basically more or less um, in, in financial terms. And then uh, we have a goal when we want to be profitable as a business. Um, so those are, are successful measures. I'm not so focused on exit, if that's what you're asking about, because my goal is to build quite a large business, which is really going to change a lot of people's lives. And I know that's going to take a bit of time. So I'm not putting a sort of deadline in terms of financial return or date on that. Mm. I guess part of it for me is understanding what drives an entrepreneur. Uh, I like, and I like to try and share with the entrepreneurial audience that um, are listening out there, you know, what is the parameter for success? And so I have had people come on and say, well, you know, my aim is to make 50 million US dollars and then I can retire. I mean, uh, I, I personally am not a big fan of money as, a, as a, a measure of success, but I'm always interested to understand or drill down into entrepreneurs' mindsets of, as to what is success. That's why I, I ask a little bit more about it other than the business parameters. Yeah, so for me, it's it's basically helping clients and families to record the stories so that they can keep them forever in their families. It's a it's an issue that I have encountered myself and basically it's a problem and a frustration that I'm trying to resolve. I, mean, I wish I had recorded my grandparents' life stories and I didn't do that. And after they passed away, the stories either faded very quickly or you know, there were questions that, that I never had the chance to ask. And as a result, I wasn't able to record some part of, of my family history um, so that's really what's what's driving me i think that's uh that's a wonderful driver 
Do you, do you, um, have you made a book for yourself? I'm working on it. I was supposed to be interviewed uh, this month or in, in April, and, and now we're basically going to change that to, to remote interviews. So I'm, I'm in the process. It's interesting because I actually, when I, when I read about what you guys are doing, I, I really love it. It reminds me in, in many ways of what I'm trying to do. I, I'm trying to get entrepreneurs' stories on the record so that those stories can be useful to other entrepreneurs, both those that want to become an entrepreneur and those that are presently entrepreneurs and struggling. So, you know, your, your business really resonates with me as a, as a, as a model. And, I, and I, so I, I definitely want you to write a book. Um, maybe we could do that together. I'd, I'd love, I'd love, I love your story. But a part of this podcast today is to try and understand your story. So, how did you end up as an entrepreneur? What you know, did, were you born an entrepreneur, or did, did you tra train yourself to be one? That's that's a great question. I I think I've always been quite entrepreneurial, although it took me quite a while to set up my first business. I mean, when I go back to, you know, I was actually you know, trading things when I was in in elementary school with other kids and making money that way. Um, Later on, I had, um, uh, I've, I've always been entrepreneurial in the sense um, that, for example, I went to China during SARS because there was an opportunity to do something interesting for me. I didn't set up a business. The reason I started this business, and that was the moment for me to, to become a, an entrepreneur, was that and this problem about you know, my grandparents having passed away, not having recorded their life stories, I had been thinking about it for over a decade and never came up with a solution that was scalable and could help a lot of people until I realized uh, when freelancer.com did an IPO in Australia that um, there were hundreds of thousands of freelancers you could manage quite easily online now and it was a big change but also that there were tens of thousands of writers on those platforms and that they were offering their services at very reasonable rates people with fantastic backgrounds great writers and I thought now actually I can create a service that can help thousands hundreds of thousands of people and that's when I decided this is my problem and I want to solve this and I'm going to become an entrepreneur. Now, I want to talk about your experience at Dragon's Den and that whole behind the scenes and what happened after. But just before we come to that, I think, of course, the, the pressing problem of today is the coronavirus. And you, and you just mentioned something that I also went through. You know, we, 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 I experienced SARS virus in Hong Kong in 2003 in Hong Kong. So, you know, we can't, kind of felt the every business shut down, everything stopped, that whole panic, that fear that I, I felt it all before. So, you know, this time around, I'm not as scared. How do you feel about it, considering you were in China when the SARS virus hits? How, how, how do you feel about coronavirus today? And how are you as a business owner handling the situation? Yeah, those are, I'll answer those very separately, I think, because they're, to me, in my mind, they're in different compartments in, in my head. In terms of me personally, I think now, actually, I'm much more aware of, of the risks than when I was in China. I mean, I was probably 22. I really wanted to go to China. I had an opportunity to get some money from Heinz to do some research with a friend. And it was just exciting. And all the whole country was empty. And we could go to all the famous tourist places and, and everything. It was just an incredible experience. And I never thought about any risks. Now, I'm a little bit older. I have a baby. I have parents who are a little bit older. I, I'm much more aware, I think, of uh, the impact of the virus and what it can have. And also, you know, the role we need to play in society to make sure that we especially keep the elderly and the vulnerable safe. And I think as a business owner, um, you know, that's also something you keep in mind because you know, it's ultimately before the government mandated people to work from home, it was the business owners or CEO's decision to tell people we're going to work from home um, you know, and, and help, that a little, you know, help society a little bit that way. So I'm thinking very differently than at the time. Personally, I'm not very scared. I have to, also a lot of things to do to worry about that are unrelated to corona mm. and are you doing anything in particular to fight back with the coronavirus i mean of course you're at home now and we're not meeting face to face like we would normally for a podcast like this but but how you know how how, how are you operating any, any different any tips for anyone um well basically we're we are fully self-isolating isolating um, with, with the family. And um, I'm trying to encourage everyone to do that as well. Um, washing hands more, I mean, it's really the basic things. Um, as a business, I mean, we've completely shifted towards remote reviewing and mm -hmm. we're helping as much as we can. And for a lot of people, that's something different. That's not what they were planning to do. Um, and they, they're not sure initially if, if they would enjoy it, but actually, 
um, we're seeing huge amounts from people that have very little video call experience and that are really enjoying now talking to their writer mm -hmm. in that way. So we're helping them. Um, also, as a business, we have made our questionnaire uh, that people use up front before they write about their life and um, uh, available for free. Um, so that older people that are self-isolating can get going on their life story, whether they want to buy our package or not. Are, are you finding that business is impacted by this right now in, in a negative or positive way? Um, it was a little bit when it really sort of started ramping up and there was a lot of uncertainty. Um, we are active in the US, the UK and the Netherlands. We saw in the UK actually that weekend that we were on Dragon Stand two weeks ago, basically the news agenda was fully COVID-19. Um, people were all shifting towards working from home. There was a bit of a, of a chaos element, but I think Brits are very calm. Uh, and we didn't really see a major dip in our sales. In the US, we had two bad weeks and then things ramped up incredibly quickly. I think the shock there was bigger. Last week was our best week ever uh, in terms of sales. So we see actually a big rebound uh, of people that have a little bit more time, are thinking a little bit more about their parents and, and how to help them do something really important. Mm. I, I want to uh, talk about your your experience on on Dragon's Den. Now, for anyone who's listening, that and I have a lot of people that listen from from China because I lived there for twenty years. I have a lot of people listening all over the world. Um, for those that don't know, Dragon's Den is the BBC Two um, TV show here in in the UK. It is broadcast all over the world. It is a fantastic show. I've been a big fan of it since it launched um, seventeen seasons ago. And it basically is a, a, a group of investors and, and experienced, successful business people that you pitch your idea to and, and they on TV uh, confirm to invest or not. And so one of the things about this show that uh, is a little bit controversial, a lot of people have said it's a little bit out of date. And of course, the investment uh, parameters in which people invest on the show is also a little bit out of date. Um, and not in touch with, say, how tech firms work and how tech firms raise money out of places like Silicon Valley. Anyway, it's an interesting show, certainly entertaining. Personally, I respect the entrepreneurs on that show. Um, however, um, going on the show, I think, is a whole different experience. A lot of entrepreneurs want to know what it's like to go on that show. A lot of people think about going on that show. And maybe, Rugger, you can share your, your experience of going on the show, how you got on the show, and, and kind of what happened. Yes, I mean, I was actually very skeptical. Of, of course, a lot of people mentioned to me Dragon's Den could be interesting. You have a consumer product, you need more awareness. No one knows that you're out there. Then I thought, well, how do I get on it? It's going to be a very long process. Maybe, you know, I will look bad or the business will look bad. Should I really, you know, put all that time and effort into it? And then a friend of mine, um, he was on the show with his pasta business called Pasta Evangelist. It's a London based business. And um, even though he didn't get investment, it had a very positive impact on his business. And he introduced me to someone at the be you see, um, who told me that they were very interested in storytellers because of what we do. And, and then I decided to apply, um, which was quite a rigorous process. I mean, they take really good care. I mean, I think there's a lot of credit to the BBC that they try to make sure that every statement that you make is true, um, whether it's a, a business financial statement or any, any other statement about um, you know, what, what your clients say about your business, uh, your personal background, your family background, if that's something that comes up. Everything is checked, so it is a very time-consuming process. But once you're on it, and we were lucky to receive offers, um, um, which usually means that you're going to be on the telly, um, it ha can have a very big impact on your business. Mm. And so, I mean, the, the show was actually recorded back in April last year. So the world is a very different place now. Did, your business is probably in a different place now. What, what has happened since that uh, episode was aired? Um, and what happened, you know, in April to the time the episode was aired? Yeah, just to start going back to, to April, we could have been, if we were lucky, on the show in August when it started, but it's completely random. We ended up being in March, which is almost 12 months later, which is a bit crazy in a way, because I'm sure a lot of the businesses don't survive those 12 months. Um, we did. I mean, we grew um, basically... Uh, yeah, we doubled our sales. Um, we, we did quite well as a business. 
So thankfully, but by the time it aired, we still had benefit from being on TV. Mm. Um, we had also made a deal. Obviously, we tried to um, agree that um, with the Dragon, Dash uh, Lanvani at the, after the show, but we didn't agree terms with him in more detail. So I raised money um, from other investors, angel investors, um, basically to help push the business forward. Mm. I think that's one of the, th the criticisms of the, sh the show. Uh, you know, there's this wonderful moment where you, you had two offers at the end to invest in your business. And, you know, you, you, you went with Tej Lalvani. Um, and, and it's interesting that, you know, what happens next is always, they, they have done some follow-ups of what happens next. But I feel like the ones that don't really go through aren't followed up on in the same way. You know, if, if your investment didn't go ahead and, 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 and you and Tej didn't make a deal, it's almost like put to the side and forgotten. And I think it's interesting to actually examine what happened to you, even though you didn't get that investment. So when you say you raise money anyway and the business continued to grow and, you know, it's, it's an interesting story that isn't really covered by the BBC. Yes, and this happens to my own understanding is at least half um, the deals that are made on the show, in some cases, the you know the entrepreneur um, may not want to go through in some cases the dragons do some due diligence or they're not as excited as they thought they would and ultimately they record a lot of shows in a short period of time they're also very busy people by the time you start talking in detail you're at least one or sometimes two months further the business evolves um, and you need to agree legal structures that may not fit with what your existing investors want or they have very specific terms that they want that you were never thinking of giving to any investor and um, so a lot of things can happen beyond that handshake after mm -hmm. you know we were 90 minutes in the studio and it was a serious conversation and you have a conversation with the intention in my case to do a deal at the level where where we basically shook hands uh, but then um, they also involve how much they're going to help you with your business. And you're not going to exactly discuss that in great detail on the show. Things move very quickly. They're all individual investors. So you're not talking to one firm where people coherently ask you questions about your business. They ask what they want to ask. Right. So you move on very quickly from person to person. Mm -hmm. I guess some of those questions also are, are sound bites, right? They're kind of interesting questions, but might not necessarily be be relevant, uh, but sound good on TV. Right? I mean, is it is yeah, it is it, no. is it is it true? You so you only get ninety minutes. Do you actually meet the dragons before, or is it just you go on, you pitch, and then that's it? You have a relationship afterwards only if they've said they're going to invest. They know nothing about your business. Um, they walk into the den initially themselves, and all they see is the setup that you've created for your business. In our case, it was basically a bookcase with a few of our products in there, and they started looking around, and we made some books with themselves on the cover and they played around with it and that's all they knew about the business they sat down we did our two minute pitch and that's all they knew about the business they do have a folder with information that the bbc has collected but they rarely take time to really look into that unless they want to look at a patent which wasn't really relevant in our case hmm. which is kind of crazy because in, in real life having personally invested in lots of startups myself you spend weeks sometimes knowing about the business before you meet the entrepreneur or, or, and, and, and you understand the ins and outs of the company and then you meet and have a serious conversation about whether or not you're compatible. So it's it's kind of reverse there, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it completely is. I mean, they and that's why they ask random questions and some questions are obviously also more for TV. And you can also see them think quite a lot as they talk. I remember on TV it looks like Peter Jones says, I'm out. I remember his I'm out was a three minute speech where he was going back and forth to the valuation and why were we asked which evaluation and it kept going and going. I think he didn't know whether he was going to say, I want to invest or I'm going to be out. Mm. And then he said, I'm out. And then on TV, you see a 10 second snippet. Right. And that's with a lot of the conversations. Um, I don't, everyone obviously is aware you're on TV and that drives how people talk. I did find the whole interaction fascinating between you and the dragons. There, there was a particular moment that I think as an entrepreneur who's raised money and, and an entrepreneur who's invested in, in people, there's this moment when you're, you're battling with the valuation in your own mind because you've got existing shareholders uh, and, and there's a deal to be made. I can see your mind ticking over. What, what was going through your mind at that moment? One, I had the intention to do a deal. I mean, I think it's, you know, that can help your business raise the profile and you know, it's it's good for the audience also to that um there you know 
people that have a lot of opportunities to invest in business invest in you. But I needed to get to a valuation that wouldn't um, antagonize my existing investors. So the value of and mission ultimately needed to be aligned. And that's why I was in my mind battling uh, mm. between how far I wanted to go uh, to make the deal happen. Mm. Do you think within that show there's a sense of, well, we can all say, yes, let's do a deal and it doesn't really matter because later we can just cancel it? Did that did that go through your mind? I could, I could see you were making a very careful consideration about the deal that you were willing to do so you don't antagonize your, your, your investors. And almost like at the end of this, you're going to shake hands on it and that's a deal done, right? Yeah, so when, when we shook hands, it was definitely my intention to complete that deal. Um, and that's why I wanted to do it at a level that I could ultimately explain to my investors. I do think some people, um, they just make a deal at any level mm. and then they know that they can get out of it. Mm. Yeah, I can see at the time, uh, to me, I could just see that you, you, know, you, were, you were really thinking about what deal you were willing to make and then you shake hands. So what went wrong? Why did the deal not go ahead? And ultimately, it really came down to a very complex legal structure um, that the Dragon wanted to to basically set up to do this deal. And um, I was not comfortable with it. And it was just adding complexity to my business, which I thought was unnecessary. And by then, the process had already taken four or five months. So at that point, um, yeah, it just was better to move on and, and raise money from, I had to already started raising money from other people at a, at a better valuation and um, it was just not moving. Mm. Did you actually uh, have a chance to form a relationship with any of the dragons afterwards or was it, it deal wasn't done, move on? So we, we had breakfast, me, one of, uh, you know, one of my lead investors with Tesh and, and one of the people that works for him um, to basically discuss the deal and especially the basis on which the advisory shares um, that we had agreed uh, would vest. Um, that was, I, th I thought was for me going to be the biggest stumbling block before having that meeting, but we actually managed to agree that. And then uh, only later on, uh, things fell apart because of the, the legal structure. Mm. Well, look, um, moving on from Dragon's Den, I mean, how is the business doing today? And I wanted to ask you in particular about your feeling around luck. I have a theory that luck is a skill. And I always have a theory that luck is a key ingredient to being successful. So I'd love to hear a story from you where you've had some good luck or some bad luck and how that's played out in your business and in your life. I think in general, I've been quite lucky. You know, I've had pretty good opportunities um, in terms of um, meeting good people, um, um, getting a good education, working with people that I learned a lot from very early in my career, specifically. I work with a number of people that helped me give me the confidence that I could solve any problem. Um, basically, I was working in consulting, working for relatively large companies such as Shell, uh, Bertelsmann. And even though the problems were very complex that we were working on, there was always a solution and always a best way forward. And um, I learned that from a number of people that um, took an interest in helping me to solve those problems and learn me how to do it myself. And I still benefit from that today because I feel like specifically now what's happening with the coronavirus, the business is doing well, the fundraising environment has more or less collapsed, um, but there's always a solution or always there's a best way forward. Um, so I feel that I've really benefited from meeting the right people that have taken the time to teach me things. Mm. What about bad luck? Have you, do you feel you've had any bad luck? I've had bad days, uh, many <laughs> of them. Bad luck, that's a really difficult question, actually, because I never really think in terms of bad luck because you know, I try to move on to the next thing if, if you have bad luck. I mean, I think it was very unlucky that Dragon's Den, for us, aired at the moment of the height of the whole COVID crisis. You know, mm. It was the days where every day, basically what the government had said the previous day was changed because things were moving so incredibly fast. Mm. And uh, that definitely took away from the opportunity for story terrors to be, uh, get much more media attention on the back of our Dragon's Den uh, than we would have had otherwise. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I know what you mean. It's interesting, isn't it? You, you, you guess you make your own luck by getting on the show and then you, you know, out, out of your control, disaster hits and, and suddenly this entertainment uh, stuff becomes less relevant in the media. 
um, and, yeah. and probably the other thing which I think was bad luck was the, our name wasn't very present so we got less web visitors than we thought mm. uh, but then the conversion was better than we expected so mm. overall uh, we were very happy and it's had a fantastic impact on the business uh, but there's always a few things that go right and go wrong um, it, it's only that you asked the question I think that I would think about bad luck mm. so if anyone wanted to get a biography done how, how, how do they do it well, if I wanted to get my life story done I've actually written a book I haven't published it yet but if I wanted to get my biography done how, how would I go about doing it well basically you come to our website and um, um, you talk to one of our staff and um, we match you with a writer so across the UK the US and the Netherlands we have 600 professional writers and we match people based on their personality and their backgrounds um, so that they're going to be interviewed by someone that really understands them quite quickly and they can have a fantastic conversation with about their life. Um, but before we have those conversations, people fill out a questionnaire to help them think about what are really the most important things I want to talk about in my book. Um, then they get the interviews. Um, obviously, people need to find photos about their lives and we help them basically turn it into a really beautiful document. Wonderful. Well, I'll, I'll put the link to your wonderful business in the in the podcast um, profile and people will be able to go ahead and, and make themselves their own biography and so um, I want to thank you for your time I, I have one last question that I like to end the podcast on and so and, and I always um, like to frame this this way if you went back to your younger self what advice would you give and what age are you when you're giving this advice to, what, how, how old is your younger self at this point I'm probably 21 and I think I should have told myself that I believe in something that um, I want to do, that I shouldn't think too many steps ahead in terms of my career and developing myself. And um, I would have become an entrepreneur earlier on. I had an idea when I was uh, in, in business school in the US when I was uh, 28, basically to build a website um, around elections. Uh, um, and um, my professor, he offered uh, to invest in the business, but I told him, no, I've come to business school because I want to go into private equity. But I was actually very excited about the idea that I built out, and that's obviously it was a little bit built out, otherwise he wouldn't have offered to invest in it. Uh, and I basically dismissed it without really considering it. And I think I would have really enjoyed it. I would have learned a lot from it. And I, I may have built a really interesting organization. And uh, so if I, and, and I was thinking too much in the long term and too little in the now. That is a great piece of advice there. I think there's a lot of people out there, very smart people that perhaps are going to university and then see themselves getting a job and they, they might have well uh, meant to be entrepreneurs perhaps, but they, they somehow talk themselves into some development process that's got nothing to do with just going and building something they love. So telling your 21-year-old self just to go and build something you love is, is great advice for any 21-year-olds out there listening. So um, wonderful. Thank you so much for giving us your time. Thank you so much for sharing your story and being open with us. I, I, I'm, I'm grateful. My audience is grateful and look forward to, uh, to watching your story play out and uh, look forward to receiving your biography. Great. Thanks for having me on, Simon. Thank you Cheers. so much. All right. Thank you for listening to the Good Luck Club podcast. We know you have thousands of podcasts you could be listening to and you've chosen us. We, of course, feel lucky. If you want to hear more, please go to thegoodluckpod.com or go to any of our social media pages and share with us your views, your insights and any way that we can improve what we're doing to make it a better experience for you. We wish you the best of luck.